That's two on Coffee. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Georgia Tech try to get Kenny Anderson the ball somewhat secondarily. By that I mean he may not handle it as much because now he gets it off the pad with a pass, dribble, or shoot situation as opposed to always dribbling the basketball. Does that mean create less? No, it, by no means does. It gives him an extra option because now he not only can pass and shoot, but he can dribble at the same time. You know what I mean? You're a triple threat now. You go from passing and shoot to dribble instead of just always dribbling and shooting. He has tied the game for Georgia Tech. 49 apiece. Man to man defense. Chicken Jansky, who had 13 in an excellent first half. And now Lynch working on Anderson. Throws up an out-of-control shot that hit nothing, and here comes Georgia Tech with a chance to take the lead. McNeil, nice move down the lane. I don't think the transition, you don't get back. McNeil will beat you, but Anderson can get it to anybody. And Georgia Tech with the lead at 51-49. Newburn working on Oliver. Blocked partially by Mackey. Anderson ahead, and Mackey almost had control. Here comes Newburn. Three on two. Good change of pace move. Well, he's got it a lot like Kenny Anderson. He'll set you up with a head fake off the dribble and just keep going. Winner gets a ticket to Denver. Dennis Scott off the pick. Too long, Newburn has it. Burton down low, Chicken Jansky. Too much. And on the follow, Coffee is fouled, and he'll go to the line. Let's have a look at. Melvin Newburn in action. Well, he's coming right at you. Now, watch him act as though he's going to pull up for the shot. And, and then you see McNeil come at him, and he just changes the speed, goes right to the basket. I mean, those are the kind of things that, that Melvin Newburn can do because he could also just pull up right there and shot the jump shot. So he made the defense commit, then took it to the basket. Carl Brown into the game as Richard Coffey approaches the free throw line. Here's a guy who's 24 years old. Oh, rather, he's not going to go to the free throw line, not in the bonus yet, so they'll inbound the ball. 24 years of age is Richard Coffey. Spent three years in the Army between high school and college. And is as tough as they come. Burton, too hard off the glass. Coffey followed by tip note. Gophers all over the board, but the loose ball comes out to Anderson. Crossover dribble. And he'll go to the line. <laughs> He's mad because he missed an easy shot. I mean, got in the paint and right in by the little dotted line, and that's one he'll probably make nine out of ten times. Meanwhile, that's three on Richard Coffey, and there is a man that the Gophers can ill afford to lose. Well, he's pretty much the spirit of the team is Richard Coffey because he plays so hard, he expects to lead by example. And after going to the service, I would imagine he's gone through much more difficult situations than this. Mention Mentioned he was in the Army for three years. He grew five inches in those three years in the Army. Up ahead of the defense is Willie Burton, and he's stripped to the ball out of bounds, and it belongs to Minnesota. Kenny Anderson and Carl Brown were in hot pursuit, and one of them had the quick hands and knocked it out of bounds. Well, I know Bobby Primrose is glad to see that because if, I know if, if I'm in the game and my man gets away, I'm the first one to try to get back. Coffee doing hard. And the basket doesn't go, but Lynch will go to the free throw line. It's all the effort of Coffee that, that got that the ball back from Minnesota. He'll go on the floor for it. Just really a tough player. Now, Georgia, it's number 13, Brian, Brian Oliver commits his first personal. There's Coffee. And Kevin Lynch will shoot. The, the intensity level for both teams seems to have picked up since the, the, the halftime. And I would suggest that in the locker room, that both Bobby Crimmins and Clem Haskett made it be known, fellas, we got 20 minutes before one of us has to go home. Kevin Lynch, a 78% free throw shooter, missed the first. Here's 
the gym. They missed them both. And Burton chases down the loose ball. Tapped out of bounds. No, off of Burton. Been telling you what Minnesota's been doing on the offensive boards. There's proof positive. Well, they, they also, they've gotten three here uh, at the top of the second half, Greg, but they're not putting them back in. They're, they're, they're just they're a little too anxious. I think you get surprised when you get offensive rebound. Dennis Scott for three. 23 for Scott. And four three-pointers today. Newburn into the lane. Beautiful shot by Melvin Newburn as the Gophers come right back. But you don't want to start that against Georgia Tech, taking it off the dribble, because now the rest of Minnesota start to look at you, and Georgia Tech can help out because nobody else is moving on the offensive end. Oliver guarded by Lynch into the paint with a good fake, and he'll shoot two. is the guilty party, and that's three on Lynch. Here's Brian Oliver, who this year became the only Georgia Tech player ever to hit 1,500 points, 500 rebounds, and 500 assists in his career, and only the third in ACC history. Duke's Danny Ferry did it, and Duke's Johnny Dawkins did it. Well, of the, the, the lethal weapons three group, this is the player that's really probably struggled the most with his foot injury. Brian Oliver hasn't been able to really go up strong, and, and it seems as though he's come out here in the half and really just, I'm going to put it on the line. Oh! Chicken Jansky rejected by Mackey and the follow by Burton. Thank you, buddy, Burton now with 21, Newburn with the steal. Newburn. Minnesota's back to within one. Now the Minnesota fans get into the noise. Oliver on the drive. Nice drive, didn't fall. Loose ball back to Oliver. Yeah, this could look fine there because he had a quick jump through the ball, and, and that's what he had been missing, the, the quick, powerful jump. Chicken Jansky. Oh, game. I give Chicken Jansky credit, but I have to ask you, if Malcolm Mackey just stood there with his hands down. I mean, you've got to put a hand up when a guy gets it on the block. Chicken Jansky goes 6'9", Mackey goes 6'10". Here's Dennis Scott. He's feeling it. Coffee almost had him tied up. Here's Carl Brown. Plenty of time on the shot clock, 25. And the foul out front, Newburn. And with that, we'll take time on the court here in the Superdome. 14.56 to play, second half. Tech leads it by one. Well, we, we've got coming in here out of timeout. Minnesota has gone out of their man-to-man -man until a matchup zone. They'll try to keep a man on the ball so nobody's standing shooting wide open jump shots. Mackey all the way over. Good move by Scott to get open, but he missed the shot. Loose ball. Newburn has it. All the way down court. Tipped by Scott. Willie Burton. Scott fell asleep. He took the shot and just didn't get back. Almost got his hand on the ball. Good job by Burton to come up with it. 23 for Burton, who hit a career-high 36 in the game against Northern Iowa. And Oliver is fouled by Newburn. There's Melvin Newburn, 6'4", senior out of Toledo, Ohio. That's three on Newburn. And Connell Lewis will replace him. Getting Connell and Lewis in the game, you get an adequate substitute, but you lose a lot of firepower with Newburn sitting over there on the bench. He scores, defends well. They're trying to tell Brian Oliver, I watched Bobby Crimmins to tell Brian Oliver to shoot the ball a little higher. He's shooting a line drive and not giving himself much chance for it to go in. Tech now 15 for 19. And we're tied at 61. With 14.07 to play here in the game. With Melvin Newberg out of the game, what they've got to do with Minnesota is, is Willie Burton needs to get involved, but particularly Kevin Lynch, because he's the most potent offensive threat other than uh, Newberg 
and Burton. Whistle in the middle. Foul goes against Georgia Tech. Looks like it's on Malcolm Mackey. It is. That's two on Mackey. And at 6'10", 245, and a freshman, he can figures to continue to grow and be around Georgia Tech for a while. Burton. Oh, Willie Burton, so aggressive on offense. Pushing down court, Cadell Lewis with the steal and a fine pass to Lynch. What you do get from Canal Lewis is, is the defensive transition that they had been missing when Newburn had been getting the game. Lewis more concerned about defense than Newburn had been. Lynch, three-pointer. And Minnesota's lead is five. Scott, long range. You better get out of here. He felt this in the first half from about the same distance. That is clearly an NBA three-pointer. 26 points for Dennis Scott. 66-64 Gophers. Minnesota back on offense now. They've hit their last seven shots. Burton. Good move down low. Make that eight straight buckets down the floor for Minnesota. This is a mismatch that favors uh, Georgia Tech. He was... Yeah, Walter Bond was guarding Dennis Scott, and Scott wanted the ball, but Bobby Crimmins decided to run the offense to try to swing it back to Dennis Scott. Anderson, baseline, tried the pass, and Kevin Lynch snaked in, but tapped it out of bounds. Kevin on the look at Willie Burton down low. Well, Willie Burton gets the ball here. Now, Dennis Scott tries to get him, but Willie does a good job doing a drop step, which means drop step toward the baseline, and, and Dennis Scott, being an offensive player, really didn't want to foul, but it was a good move by Burton. Richard Coffey into the game, and there's Jim Schickenjanski taking a seat on the Minnesota bench. This is a quicker lineup, but it's a much, much smaller than Minnesota's custom to playing with. Oliver takes the three, takes the two. 13 for Oliver. Georgia Tech having trouble inside. They're, they're going to probably try to... Make sure they keep the ball outside, play a little 2-3 zone. Bond swings it to Lewis for three. And Lynch on the rebound. Good bounce pass to Coffey, and he hits the deck. We'll take time. 11-44 to play. Second half, Minnesota leading it by two. <laughs> Welcome back to the Superdome in New Orleans, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner and Willie Burton and Dennis Scott have really been the show so far. Well, they really have been the show. You know, the offensive rebounds obviously favoring Minnesota. I think that's one of the things that's kept them in the game. And even though you see Dennis Scott with 26 points, the thing that you have to say is that Kenny Anderson still has pushed the ball up, been able to get it to, Ann, uh, to Scott, so he doesn't have to take the shot off the dribble. Minnesota has put for 14 points off of those 12 Georgia Tech turnovers. Can Anderson handle the ball in the backcourt. Well, he's handling, I mean, it's like an extension of his hand. Top of the key, Oliver. Missed the three-pointer, and Burton has it. And a whistle, and a technical foul has been called. Willie Burton turned around to the official after having grabbed the ball. Dennis Scott reached in. Willie Burton said to the official very loudly, all call the foul. And the official felt that that was much too much at this time. And I'm sure what Clem Haskin is saying to Willie is, look, this is an emotional game, but you've got to control them. Put your energies into the game. Don't take it out on the official. This is Dennis Scott. them both. We have 11 minutes, 25 seconds to play here in the second half. Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner in New Orleans, Southeast Regional Championship. And we're all tied at 68. Georgia Tech has been able to push the ball up the court with Kenny Anderson doing the job as well as Dennis Scott. 
and, and but Minnesota has got offensive rebounds. But the, the point I want to make is that what just happened here is Minnesota missed out on the ball. They had a rebound. The ball's going on the other end, and, and Willie Burton gets the technical. Georgia Tech gets two shots and the ball. This is you, every possession counts. You can't afford to do that in championship play. Burton with the near steal. Ball comes back to Oliver. Shot comes up short in the lane. And Burton has the rebound. Minnesota with Coffey, Burton, Lynch, Lewis, and Bond on the floor. And Melvin Newburn about ready to check back in. And I'll tell you why, Greg, as, as Tim Haskins looked at it, he noticed his team was not in sync. You see, that jump shot is not, you don't need that shot. Willie Burton just took. Willie Burton just takes it. The shot is way too long, and it's just an ill-advised shot. And you see Walter Bond make an effort to try to get it back in. Besides, he wants to visit, <laughs> visit the cameraman for a while. Well, the shot did get all net. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the wrong side. That was the outside. Then Scott being hounded by Burton works his way in, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Foul is on Bond. Dennis Scott on Friday night against Michigan State had just 18 points and nine rebounds. And those 18 points, Two guys. a full 10 below his average. Yeah, just 18 points, but he made the big hoop for him in the game. So he's still their, their number one scorer. When I, when I asked him about it, I said, did you struggle with your shot? He said, no, not really. I was able to get the one down down the stretch, and I feel that I, I'm, I'm ready to go. 30 points today, I'd say so. 70 to 68, Georgia Tech. Under 10 and a half to play. Burton double teamed and kicks it back out to Lynch. Newburn for three. You can see it from here. It had that shooter's touch on it. Go up there with a little roll, come back. 15 for Newburn, 71-70, Minnesota in the lead. Oliver finds his way down the lane. Nice move, Brian Oliver. And Tech is back on top, 72-71. Two three zone, they'll, they'll move it up to a 2-1-2 two with Georgia Tech. Newburn travel. Found a slippery spot on the floor. And Jim Shikinjanski will back into the lineup for Minnesota as Burton takes a seat on the bench. Burton sits down with 27 points. Shikinjanski playing well on the, the inside. He's got to pick up some of that play. Try to expose McNeil to some fouls. Scott, three-pointer. That's the same play they ran at the end of the half. And McNeil has been called for a foul underneath. The basket will count. And McNeil commits the foul, fighting for the position. I mean, McNeil gets the foul, but what we saw with Dennis Scott and Kenny Anderson, what they were doing, were talking about that play. And Dennis Scott is basically telling, I feel it. If you, anytime you get me the ball, I can put it in the basket. With the three-pointer, Georgia Tech opens up a four-point lead. McNeil with four personals now takes a seat on the bench. Bond open for a moment. That's all he needed. Ball movement. If you can get a ball inside the teeth of a zone defense and you kick it out, the defense reacts. Everybody collapse on the ball. It's usually good to get it weak side as uh, Minnesota did for that jump shot. Under nine minutes to play for the game now. Georgia Tech with the ball leading by two. Kenny Anderson calling for the ball. Shot comes up short, and Lynch has the rebound. Anderson wanted the ball much sooner than he got it. Yeah, I mean, you're right, and what that does is it gets you out of your rhythm, and, that, and Kenny basically forced the shot. Bond 
for three. That one's short. Picks the rim and goes over the basket. Here comes Anderson. Out of the middle. Just amazing to watch him handle the ball. He just gets it where he wants to, to get, and that's what makes it so so amazing because it puts pressure on the defense. See, they'll run this play, and if you don't guard Dennis Scott, he'll come back and shoot it. That time, Kenny took it. 77-73. Anderson has 25. Georgia Tech in their man-to-man. Coffee to the baseline. Lost control, and Brown doesn't get a chance to save it. While he pays a visit to the visitors on the far side, we'll take a timeout. Did you know? New Orleans, Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner, 733 to play in the game. Georgia Tech leading by four. And following this game, we'll take you out to the Oakland Coliseum for the West Regional Final between Loyola Marymount and Nevada Las Vegas. That's one of those games, Greg, you get everything you want to have in between before the game. Because there's no time to walk out when Nevada Las Vegas and LMU meet. The action's going to be much too fast. Bobby Kremen engineering Georgia Tech's third appearance in the final eight. They lost in 85 to Georgetown. They lost in 1960 to eventual national champion Ohio State. The 85 team one might have been his best when he had Sally and Price. That was a good club for him. Burton back into the lineup. Trap up and in by Chicken Jansky. 17 for him. And it's a two-point game. 1-3-1, one, one. this is more of a trapping defense here, and they got Kevin Lynch on the ball, and, and then they'll, they'll flatten it out until like a 3-2, trying to keep people off the ball. Oliver shot way short, here come the Gophers. Newburn ahead, Chicken Jansky travel. That's, that's Melvin Newburn's fault on that one. Chicken Jansky is a, a player that's about 6'9". You get in the ball so he can take one step after he catches it and go to the basket. That time the pass was too far under the basket. Anderson into the corner and then back outside again. Oliver's pass inside, stolen by Newburn. Here comes Minnesota again. Kevin Lynch will stop. Newburn's quickness gets the ball to Lynch. That's the guard combination we talked about. We've got Dennis Scott down on the side over here, and he seems to be in a little bit of pain. And we'll stop for a moment just to see how Dennis Scott is doing. He says he's all right. When you're on a roll like Dennis Scott, <laughs> you'll find a way to get back in there. Take a look and see if we can figure out how it happened. On the right side of your screen, you see he and Chicken Jansky get tangled up here. And then he just, he stumbles. It looked like he just twisted his ankle a little bit, but he, he's still in the game, so he's obviously all right. This, the question is about the 45 second clock, uh, how much time had gone off because the ball was clearly in bounds. And the shot clock now being run down to just 43. Tied at 77. Minnesota shooting 54% from the floor. Georgia Tech 52. This 1-3-1 one, one is, is a good defense when you want to keep the ball and, and trap at it out of it occasionally. Like, it's Kenny Anderson's hard to trap, but this one place where you can keep an eye on Dennis Scott. Scott! Oh, what shot! Think the foot's all right? <laughs> Six three-pointers for Scott today, 36 points for the game. Lynch trying to dish it off, tips out of bounds. Dennis Scott telling Brian Oliver that he made a great defensive play. Team defense-wise, it really was. Get over and help out, otherwise Chicken Jansky's got a basket. Newburn in the lane. That's a tough shot. Coffey has the loose basketball. Burton for Chicken Jansky. They play good team basketball. Burton is the guy who scored fast. Good team basketball. Got to have that now. Chicken Jansky now has a season high 19 points. Scott fakes the three, takes the two. Rebound, Mackey. And the foul looks to be on 
Richard Coffey, who is about to plead his case and say, I was out of the play. In vain. <laughs> and that's four on Coffey. At the line. I think he agrees with that call, Greg. Mackey misses the first. Johnny McNeil off the Georgia Tech bench to replace Carl yeah. Brown. Got a bigger lineup in here now. Carl Brown is doing a good job putting the perimeter pressure on, but what Bobby Primmons wants to make sure it doesn't happen on the other end, offensive end, that there's not any offensive rebound from Minnesota. Mackey misses them both. He is still scoreless for the day, although he has six rebounds, and Georgia Tech's lead remains at one with 5.20 to play. Burton to the baseline. Found an opening. Went to the left hand and put Minnesota up one. You know, as much as both teams started to run early, what you're seeing now is this this gets to be the time of the game where people tend to be a little more conservative, slow it down, try to get into your half-court offense. Anderson had to adjust his shot, put it too hard off the board, but Scott was there. Dennis Scott with 38. Burton for three. Hit the front of the rim. Here comes Anderson. Four on three for Georgia Tech, and he was fouled. And that is Newburn, and that's four on Newburn. Well, Melvin Newburn's trying to tell Willie that's a shot we don't need. It's basically why he called out Willie, Willie Burton. Clem Haskins not at all pleased with it either at his end. Well, you take a shot that quickly. He's saying, yeah, make the ball turn around. You, you need to because you've got to move the defense. You take it that quickly, your teammates don't have a chance to get an offensive rebound. Kenny Anderson. Seven out of seven from the line. Seven out of eight. Under four and a half to play. Minnesota looking for the lead. This is what it's all about. Newburn. That's a two-pointer. I say this is what it's all about. This is what they talk about with the dream. This is when you dream now. You're under five minutes. Nip and tuck going down the stretch. I make the great play. 4-0-1 to play. Second half. Minnesota by one. Don't go away. I love you, little Jenny Catherine. 82, and we have seen yet another outstanding performance by Kenny Anderson of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. I guess the question remains, can he play the game win? <laughs> he answers the question every time. And if you notice, with the exception of this game right now, still playing, his numbers have increased. So when it gets on the line, Kenny Anderson stands up the play. Dennis Scott has had a huge game today for Georgia Tech with 38 points. Brian Oliver fouled as he took it to the hoop and he'll go to the line that's one way to get a score like uh, Oliver if you will off the snide he's really struggled with his offense and then and, and, and Primus told him all right what you need to do Brian is you get a chance take the ball to the basket score from the foul line if you have to foul number two on Chicken Jansky and Oliver is five of eight from the line today six out of nine now Coffee and Newburn, four fouls apiece for Minnesota, four for McNeil of Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech takes the lead. 84-83 as we approach 345 to play for the game. Carl Brown is like your worst nightmare on defense. He's all over. There's a steal by Scott. And throws it up and Burton dives and fouls him. And let's check Dennis Scott to see if he's okay. He looks to be. And Brian Oliver telling him, great steal. This is the pressure on the ball. Carl Brown made this happen with his pressure on the ball. Dennis Scott recognizing that pressure comes out, makes the steal, and Willie Burton in his effort to try to get the ball back knocked Dennis Scott down. Scott hit the pillar, but he's up. He's going to shoot his foul shot. But it was a good defensive effort by Carl Brown. At the line. 
and a pretty good move for a guy who goes 6'8", 230 pounds, Dennis Scott. You know, he really doesn't look that big. He's, he's thick, so he doesn't look that big, but he's very, very agile. But I tell you what, he's got big time range. I mean, he's got it from downtown behind the three point line. That's a 40 point game for Dennis Scott. And Tech's lead is three as we approach three and a half minutes. And the foul out front goes against Carl Brown. That's three on Brown. Yeah, but more importantly, they're not in the penalty. So, yeah, it's, it's a foul, but they haven't given it up yet. And I think that's the, the good part about it for, for Bobby Crimmins. Five team fouls on Georgia Tech. Minnesota has not made a free throw this half. They've only shot two. Hoover lost the ball. Possession arrow favors the Gophers. Carl Brown is causing Minnesota to, to, to just lose themselves offensively. He's working hard. That time he was in good defensive position. Official made no call, which was the, the right call. And they almost got a turnover. out of bounds and it belongs to Minnesota and now it's ruled the other way and Clem Haskins is going to go nuts well, the, the two, two officials get together like they need to do they, they get together and get the right call <laughs> Clem was about to have a gem <laughs> Here's Lynch. Puts it up and fouls. So Lynch will go to the line. Kenny Anderson, the guilty party. And Bobby Kremen says, yeah, he traveled. Well, Bobby's trying to, like the coach, trying to get everything he can out of it. Lynch with 10 points today and two out of four from the line. Richard Coffey back into the lineup. Yeah, it's the time of the game. You get your players on, on the court now, and Coffey's been rebounding. You've got to get him out there. Time for Lynch to step forward as well. 86-84. And Clem doing a little cheerleading. Well, he wants this team to take on pretty much his personality. Clem is a very intense person. And Lynch is one of the guys he used to get on for not showing some intensity. Lynch chases it down, but then the throw away. And Scott picks it off. Anderson looking for Scott down low. And Bond all over him. Anderson for three. Got to get out there. Everybody became so concerned about Scott. They left Kenny Anderson, they left Kenny Anderson open. 28 for Anderson, five-point lead for Georgia Tech with 2.45 to play. And a timeout for Minnesota. <laughs> Yvette Haskins, Clem Haskins' wife, the vested interest in this game. Georgia Tech with its largest lead of the day. Five points, 240 to play in the game. They've gotten a lot of it. Their lead has come from it. Carl Brown has just put so much defensive pressure on Minnesota that they are just out of rhythm on the offensive end. Burton, a long three-pointer. And Bond has the ball back, lost it. Burton regains. But again, they're not in a rhythm. Burton again, and he nails this one. I mean, he makes this, but if he doesn't, Clem Haskins is just going to get to him because they're just taking the ball, catching it, and shooting. 32 for Burton, and Minnesota's within two as we approach two minutes to play. Anderson to the baseline. Oh. Around and out, Burton has the rebound. Lynch thought about taking it in, and he'll bring it back out. They'll try to swing the ball. They'll get get in the hands of Willie Burton as much as they can, but Melvin Newburn is known to go one-on-one -on -one in tight situations. 
Burton looking for his shot. Lynch to the other side, off the glass, no. Rebound down to Brian Oliver. It's not desperation time here for Minnesota. All they have to do is stay here and play good defense. They don't need to foul. Two-point game as we approach a minute 20. Yeah, this is this is the thing to do. Georgia Tech is going to hold it out. They've got people like Kenny Anderson that can go one-on-one, -on -one, as well as the man with the ball, Dennis Scott. Still plenty of time left. 15 seconds on the shot clock. And one minute exactly. Oliver down the lane. That is an offensive foul on Brian Oliver. The Tech bench wants the basket to count. It will not. It will not count. To get the ball as far out as Brian Oliver did, you've got to know somebody's going to come over and step in, take the charge. That time it was Richard Coffey. Oliver should have pulled up and just taken a little shot. He had even enough time to just bring it back out and start the offense again. Tech with a two-point lead. Minnesota calls timeout. 54 seconds to play. We'll be back. Bobby Primer's team has done a good job being aggressive, but what Minnesota has to do is even with that aggressiveness, if you have to back cut somebody, do that, but don't come down and take quick shots because it may lead to a fast break going the other way. Now here, you want to get the ball in the hands of Willie Burton. He's their leading scorer. You don't want to waste your time trying to get it to anybody else. You saw how dominant the trio of Scott Anderson and Oliver have been. Only Carl Brown with two points and Johnny McNeil with two points have done any other scoring outside of that threesome for Georgia Tech. And there's a timeout called as Minnesota has problems inbounding the ball. seconds remain here in the Superdome in New Orleans Southeast Regional Championship game and it's been a dandy from the opening taps Georgia Tech leading Minnesota 89 to 87 Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner we've seen some outstanding performances today Willie Burton for Minnesota Dennis Scott a big scoring game still Kenny Anderson the freshman for Georgia Tech showing that he is going to be a big time player for a long time well I think that is definitely the case that Kenny Anderson played well but Brian Oliver struggling, still able to get into the scoring. But what we saw was, as a rule, Kenny Anderson had the tempo pretty much where he likes to have it. He moved it up when he felt the team was running. They were turning the ball over. He wisely started bringing it back out. Then Dennis Scott got hot. And once you got a player like Scott getting hot, Anderson handling the ball, that gives Georgia Tech a great duo as well as Oliver getting hot on his side. I recall seeing one national publication prior to the tournament that said, Kenny Anderson is too young to have very much impact. Well, clearly that's not the case. He reminds me of, uh, when I said Nate Archibald, he reminds me of Nate at about 24 and 25 years old. This young man, obviously only 19 years old, he's got great savage. Newburn. The shot clock for Minnesota is at 25. Kevin Lynch to the baseline and is fouled. Oliver chasing him all the way around the pick, fouled him, and will send Lynch to the line to shoot two. What Lynch had been having is that uh, for a while, Kenny Anderson had been guarding him. By the time he got over there, Brian Oliver got there. But, but Lynch has become a competitor. He is the one player that, uh, when you talk to the coaching staff prior to the game, that they felt had to have a big game for Minnesota to win it. You saw the numbers there. Should Georgia Tech win this game, they may feel they won it at the line. Lynch is a 78% free throw shooter. He is three out of seven today. Rebound. 
This is the one you, you, you practice. You practice this all day when you're a kid. You want to be able to shoot this one. Because if you miss it, you play good, solid defense. But with Kenny Anderson on the other side, you've got a ball handler that will make you foul him and has been known to make some tough shots. And to that end, defensively, Connell Lewis has replaced Walter Bond on the floor for Minnesota. One-point game and full-court pressure from the Gophers. You deny Kenny Anderson the ball. And the foul is on Lynch. Look for the charging foul from Oliver and instead draws the blocking foul. Foul on the Gophers, number three. Kevin Lynch has his foot. Let's take another look. So you, it, you get yourself in trouble. Anytime you get in the corner and there's a trap, now, the official felt there was some contact made, and, and Kevin Lynch must have initiated that contact for him to make that call. He was reaching for the ball with the right hand, and here is Brian Oliver, 7 of 10 from the line today, and 17 points. for Georgia Tech, half a minute to play. You expect your seniors to come through right there. Brian Oliver didn't even flinch. He's knocking that one down. Newburn, off the glass, no. Here's Anderson, fouled in the backcourt. Well, if you're wondering why Clem Haskins didn't take a timeout, first of all, he doesn't have many to spare. He wanted to keep it. The other thing is you like to push the ball up so the defense doesn't get set. With a player like Melvin Newburn, he's got the capabilities of getting in there, yeah, making the same shot. He obviously missed it, but that's why the timeout was not taken. Twenty-nine for Kenny Anderson. Eight out of nine from the free throw line. And one of the one of the times you can think, well, this is a freshman. I'll put him on the line anytime if you buy the printer. Thirty. Ninety-three eighty-eight. Bond. Lynch. Cross court and Burton looks for the three. And got it for timeout for Minnesota. Minnesota within two, seven seconds to play. Gillette. 93-91, Georgia Tech in the lead. Minnesota out of timeouts. And Georgia Tech has the basketball and the possession arrow in its favor. Clem Haskins will want his players to commit a foul here. They will try to keep the ball from Kenny Anderson. I'd, I'd funnel the ball to Carl Brown. He's not a good foul shooter, and, they, and, and what they've done is Georgia Tech ran him out. Anderson with the ball and the foul by Connell Lewis. And one second runs off the clock. <laughs> Bobby Krim is looking for everything he can get, trying to get <laughs> an intentional foul. Now the Anderson, a 73% free throw shooter. Well, obviously Brown is the person to foul, but Kenny Anderson is so quick, it's difficult to keep him from the ball. And, and what I would probably like to see him done is try to force the ball away from Anderson or, or just force it to Brown. They ran Brown out, so Anderson was left. Missed it. No timeouts remaining. They need at least a two to tie. Kevin Lynch out of the corner. Georgia Tech on the way to Denver.
defense here. Kevin Lynch skirting the defense. A three-pointer would win it here. Well, the three-pointer would win it, but he, what he did is he got caught going in the corner. McNeil just made it too difficult for the shot to happen as, as well as Lynch would like it to. Bobby Crimmins. It, he looks like he's, he's a little bit numb about it. You know, it's like... Mm. Yep. Now, on the other side, his wife is much more emotional. <laughs> We're going to Denver. Going to Denver. You could say they're happy campers. Dennis Scott just 18 points in 45 minutes. Friday night comes up with 40 today as Georgia Tech advances to the Final Four. Once again, the final score, Georgia Tech 93, Minnesota 91, and Georgia Tech on the way to Denver. Coming up next, Loyola Marymount and UNLV, our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players, Willie Burton of Minnesota, Dennis Scott of Georgia Tech. So for Quinn Buckner, I'm Greg Gumbel saying so long from the Southeast Regional in New Orleans. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Championship. Back to Jim Nance in New York. All right, Greg, so we've got a double ACC appearance out in Denver. Duke joins. Buckner, lethal weapon three, and Coach Bobby Cremens is making his first trip to the Final Four. How's it feel? It feels good. I got my father's good luck on right here. <laughs> it was a great basketball game. Minnesota's a very physical team. But these guys hung in there. Dennis was shooting him. Brian with the bad ankle. Kenny gave us a big three, but Dennis Scott was sensational. Great basketball game. I'm just really proud that we're going forward. All right, Quinn, how about the lethal weapons over there? Well, we'll start right here with Kenny Anderson. He came out and had a great game. He shot the ball. I thought your team, you control the tempo. Is that something you wanted to try to do? Well, we knew Minnesota was very physical and very patient, and they run that offense uh, extremely patient. So we just wanted to come out and play Georgia Tech style of ball, and that's my job, to get the tempo going up, and our fast break is really clicking today. Congratulations. I want to holler here at Dennis Scott. Dennis, you had 40. You had 18 the other night, but you got it going here today. I got, first of all, I thank God. I thank my mom, my brother. I see you all in Denver. <laughs> but I think tonight we just hung tough and we played together down the stretch and we believe in each other. And Coach has confidence in us and feels good and he's playing hard. Good. You couldn't get your jumper going, but you seem to take the ball to the basket, Brian. It looked pretty good. Well, you know, my ankle being aggravated, you know, this turmoil. I've been limiting some of the things I've been able to do. I was just trying to go and help these guys here. I was able to get some good moves to the hole, and fortunate enough, we were able to do it. This threesome is definitely lethal. Got it back to you, Greg. All right, Quinn. Congratulations, gentlemen. Have fun in Denver. That's it for now from the Louisiana Superdome, where Georgia Tech has won it, 93-91. Let's take it back to New York once again in Jim Nance. Jim? All right, a great scene in New Orleans. So Lethal Weapon 3 out duels Bond, Walter Bond and company from Minnesota, and they're headed to Denver. We're going to come back and speak with Nolan Richardson, the coach of the Raiders.